test broadcast Monday. Ah, kahapon pa to. Oh, so, hindi, hindi pa naka-open pa lang. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. Hi, right, Tuna. Okay, so we're going live in 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. Okay. This meeting is being live streamed. Yes, it is. And we're having technical difficulties. Hi, <laughs> Adam. Ah, ah. What the ba? Ako ay nalito na. Hold on. Okay, let's do this na lang like that. Before I do, no 
wants to go until one love says that he will come true. This day will be bright as the sun before I do. Guess the day when you said yes to me It's amazing how we got this far Everybody sees that I'm so in love with you Words cannot express how much you mean to me For all time would you guide my heart Anyone can see we can't be far apart. We have forever a little much. We will not touch. Let's stay together. It's gotta be love. This is the right time to plan a lifetime. I can't believe we're ready. Now this is a dream come true. Let's make this day bright as the sun before I do. Looking forward to the start of our lives together. So much happiness, I know it's forever. Will come true because I know it's you. We're growing stronger, much closer together. It only happens once. We cannot miss this chance of a lifetime. We have forever ahead of us. We will not rush. Let's stay together. It's gotta be love. This is the right time to plan a lifetime. I can't believe we will be one love. The season dream comes true. Let's make this day bright as the sun before I do. This is the right time to plan a lifetime. I can't believe. Now this is a dream come true. Let's make this day bright as the sun before I do. Moments to go until one. Now this is a dream come true. This day will be bright as the sun before I.
Okay, good evening everybody and welcome um, to another FB Live here at Before I Do uh, Bridal Fair. And uh, tonight we'll be talking about basically about the requirements of our, uh, what do you call this, of the government when it comes to our wedding requirements so para to sa mga ikakasal. And uh, tonight, we are happy to be with uh, one of the go-to people namin when it comes to, uh, go-to person when it comes to this um, particular uh, requirements or particular, uh, what do you call this? How do you call that? Ayan, nawala tuloy ako. Uh, issues or documentation problems? Other wedding coordinators or planners go to Kim pag kailangan po nila ng tulong when it comes to legal matters. No? So from getting married actually hanggang sa, what they call this, hanggang sa actually paghihwalay. Pero huwag natin pag-usapan yung paghihwalay nga. Doon tayo sa pagpapakasal because of course our program is about before I do. No? So yeah. Bago ikasal, ano ba yung kailangan natin? Uh, we already had, uh, what do you call this? The first run of what uh, the law requires for wed uh, wedding couples. No? So I believe we will have a recap or if not, we'll go back to the very start. Uh, kasi most of the people here was not able to attend that uh, first part. No? So Actually, the first part namin puro foreigners yung aming guests. So, um, kasi po mahirap po yung, what do you call this? Uh, mahirap yung mag-discuss tayo ng part two na without you really knowing kung ano yung pinagsimula ng mga requirements natin. So, uh, I will not take more of your time, sir. Uh, Angel, I'll leave the floor to you. 
Hi. Hi, good evening everyone. Kumusta po kayo? Sana naka-tune in na kayo for your guidance on how to complete the basic requirements of the government for your clients when they are applying for a marriage license. Siyempre kasama sa planning sa planning obligation ninyo yun, sa duty to guide them. So it's very important for every planners or coordinators to have this knowledge on how to advise their clients. So this is the marriage laws in the Philippines. From the family code, hindi pa naman ito napapalitan until now. Nadadagdagan lang yung requirements. So if there, were, if there are complicated issues in the documents, the local civil registrar who gives the marriage license actually has the power to ask for additional documents if they found it to be uh, necessary. Lalo na kung may nakita silang mga inconsistencies sa documents mo ng client mo. So, naririnig ba ako this summer? Yes, sir. Okay. So, we will just repeat from the start. The, the Family Code contains several chapters. The very first chapter contains the basic requirements. So, the basic requirements lang in applying for the marriage license, of course, number one is the age of the contracting parties. Kisa natin sa unang-unang requirement. Itong Family Code naman natin, igaling na to sa ating mga konstitusyon na dumaan na hindi naman nila inaalis yan every time magbabago ang ating konstitusyon. Nagbago lang yan sa age nung dumating ang 1987 Constitution. Kasi before, the Civil Code, ang marriage law natin, 14 years old. Pwede na magpakasal <laughs> noong time na yun. Hanggang, hanggang 16 before the Family Code was created. So, dahil daw dun sa pagiging bata ng contracting parties, tumaas yung numbers ng mga marriage breakups because of the lack of maturity sa paghandle ng relationship or ng marriage. So when that civil code took effect in 1950, nagkaroon ng book one which covers the persons and family relations, then the civil personality, then the citizenship and domicile, then comes the family code, doon nila yung hinugot at nagkaroon ng changes sa ating mga requirements. And that was uh, enunciated in the, in the handbook in the Family Code of the Philippines where Justice Alicia B. Sempiudi was one of the proponents of this code. Okay? So we move forward. Oh, by the way, this is from the Marriage and Family Laws Division of BCIDP Law Group. Philippines, we have this division where we solemnize marriages, of course, by some of our resident license solemnizing officers. And we have this wide experience in dealing with the civil registrars in terms of registration of marriages, in terms of dealing with the complicated documents like when the parties are annulled or divorced, maraming additional documents ang kailangan yan. Maraming hinahanap, hinihingi to support the issue ones of the, of the marriage license. Kasi kailangan maalis yung doubt sa kanila eh. Kailangan maalis yung doubt na, na supported by the documents. Hindi sila wala silang impediment in entering into a marriage. So, yun ang target ng mga civil registrars natin. Na nobody should be or should have a legal impediment when entering into a marriage. Ganyan ka higpit ang ating family ko tungkol sa kasalan. Ha? <laughs> so, hindi rin basta-basta 
ang pagpapakasal. Marami na rin tayong mga alam na parties or clients na nahirapan sa preparation ng kanilang documents because of some issues like yung passport niya, kailangan ibalik sa pagkadalaga niya, or si groom na may divorce record, tapos sometimes yung divorce pa, hindi naka-English. So, challenge yan sa mga couples. Kailangan pa ipatranslate at para maging believable yung translation, kailangan naka- validated by the Philippine Embassy doon sa lugar na yun. So maraming may encounter na problems. Na nag-guide naman namin yung aming mga clients all throughout the process. At uh, siyempre, natutuwa sila. No? Na yung dating imposible ay naging possible. Okay? Kaya nga yun ang aming yun ang aming mantra no provides you the legal way when there seems to be no way okay <laughs> so the background of the family code as i have explained a while ago this was created during the time of uh, president cory aquino so if we go specifically doon sa requirements Merong legal principle na kahit na may nakitang problema sa documents after the marriage or during the celebration of the marriage, kahit na may nakitang deficiency or inconsistency sa documents, the legal principle for this matter is always the presumption of marriage. Ibig sabihin, kahit na anong makita problema diyan kung nakasal na any doubt is resolved in favor of the validity of the marriage yeah kahit na anong atake ang gawin natin dun sa sa marriage ang sabi ng gobyerno eh valid yung kasal valid pa rin so sa marami pagkakataon maraming cases sa Supreme Court ang lumabas that tells us uh, ano man yung maging issue dyan. The marriage is valid. Kaya wag tayong basta-basta magko-conclude na avoid ah, dyan. Huwag kasal. <laughs> Hindi tayo dapat magko-conclude. Huwag natin uunahan yung korte. Ha? <laughs> okay? So kahit na anong issue yan na hindi member ng simbahan o bawal magkasal yung ganito, eh, magagamit lang naman ng parties yan kapag nag-aaway na. So habang hindi pa nag-aaway, eh, huwag na natin pakialaman yun, ha? Turuan na lang natin sila kung paano magsama ng maayos. Okay po? <laughs> okay. So our constitution is committed to the policy of strengthening the family as a basic social institution. Our family law is based on the policy that marriage is not a mere contract but a social institution in which the state is vitally interested. The state can find no stronger anchor than on good, solid, and happy families. The breakup of families weakens our social and moral fabric. Hence, their preservation is not the concern of the family members alone. Yung pagpapreserve ng pamilya, kaya hindi lang daw yung family members ang concern doon. Even the state, yung gobyerno. In the case of, as enunciated in the case of Sevilla versus Cardenas. As you can see on the slides. So, the marriage law, of course, when you reach the, the age of 18 and above, that qualifies the parties to the marriage. Pero kung ikaw lang yung 18, tapos yung isa, 16 or 17, <laughs> hindi pwede yun. Okay? Ikaw lang yung qualified eh. Dapat dalawa kayong qualified. So, Article 1, ang unang, unang sinabi, ay pinapaliwanag kung ano ba yung marriage. Ito daw ay special na kontrata of permanent union. Permanente itong pagsasama between a man and a woman. So sorry na lang doon sa nagwi-wish ng man and man or woman to woman. <laughs> Hindi pa yan pwede mangyari sa atin. 
So, nilinaw ng family ko na between a man and a woman only. Okay? Now, yung marriage na yan na sinasabi ng ating family code ay isang bagay na hindi pwedeng idikta yung terms ng parties. Okay? Ang nagdidikta ng terms sa marriage ay ang Estado o ang gobyerno. Okay po, hindi natin pwedeng ilagay doon sa marriage na oh, ito ang gusto ko ha. Ah, ikaw mag ko ang bubuhay sa akin ha. Kasi ikaw yung may trabaho. Ako wala tumatanggap sa akin. No? Yung mga ganun terms or conditions, hindi natin pwedeng ibigay yan sa isa't isa. Okay? Ang inaalaw lang ng batas, yung mga prenuptial agreements na what is yours is my what is mine is mine what is yours is yours so it happens to both parties na parehong may investment before they entered into the marriage so pag to release their their worries yung mga pag-aalala nila they will enter into a prenuptial agreement at kailangan niyan ay naka tick yung box no may box sa particular box sa marriage I just don't recall the number kasi bawat box of marriage contract may number siya, may numbering. No? Box number one, box number two. So it's actually located in the center of the marriage contract. Na kapag may prenup sa agreement yung inyong clients, pirmado nila ang dalawa yan, that document will govern their property relationship. So ang tawag po doon, yung property relations nila mag-asawa. Ibig sabihin, uh, dinikta na nila yung kanilang magiging arrangement sa kanilang properties before and during the marriage. Okay po. So, kung mayaman ang clients mo na magpapakasal o mayaman po kayong dalawa na magpapakasal, eh, kinakailangan po ang pag-uusap sa isang abogado para mapag-usapan po yung inyong mga terms and conditions. But definitely, the, it only refers to the property relations. So, requisites of marriage, male and female. So, uh, marriage daw, sabi ng Supreme Court, may tatlong parties. The man, the woman, and the state. Considering that the state provides for duties, privileges, and restrictions which are being written into every contract. Hindi rin sa kagaya daw ng bentahan or service agreement na nadidictate ninyo yung term sa isa't isa. So, iba ang marriage. You cannot dictate the terms and conditions. So, unlike ordinary contracts, which may be terminated or rescinded by the parties upon mutual agreement, the marital bonds can only be severed by death or upon a court declaration of nullity or annulment. So, mag-isipan niyo pong mabuti yan kung talaga bang kayo ay decided na. So, marami na rin kaming nasaksihan na weddings na hindi natuloy. <laughs> okay. Dahil sa pagbabago ng isip ng isa o, the, o ng isa sa kanila or both of them, nagbagot isip. So, hindi siya ganun kasimple na desisyon. Okay? So, article 2 na tayo ngayon, Family Code of the Philippines. No marriage shall be valid at least this essential legacy shall present. Ito ay kabisadong-kabisado na nung ilan sa ating mga kaibigan. No? Legal capacity, consent freely given, kailangan personal appearance, hindi pa allowed yung ating uh, online wedding in 2020 there was a bill filed by a lawmaker in congress pero hindi siya hindi pa siya naging batas no i don't think papayagan ng simbahan yan yung online marriage so article 3 authority na nagkakasal valid marriage license saan lang gagaling tong marriage license sa city hall ng parties kung you actually have the options, kung ano ba, magkaibang lugar kayo, you can apply in each of these cities or municipalities. And dahil sa COVID, yung scheduling ng mga seminars required when you apply the marriage license ay naging challenge ano, sa bawat couple. So, aalamin nyo na lang kung ano yung schedule na binibigay ng city hall mo at ng city hall niya. Okay? <laughs> Kung ano yung magmamat sa inyo doon, then doon kayo mag-apply. Number, paragraph 3, 
dapat na sa harapan daw ng contracting parties no that they take each other as husband and wife at may minimum na two witnesses of legal age hindi pwedeng bata so ano ba yung legal age so 18 pataas para mas sigurado kayo yung taong na intindihan yung ginagawa ninyong dalawa sa harapan yun po yung talagang uh, legal witnesses minimum of two maximum of ilan ang pwedeng magwitness sa marriage contract 12 na head or sponsors ang pwedeng pumirma sa marriage contract. Apat sa first page and eight sa likod. Pag sumobra kayo doon, eh, lilitan yung pirma ng mga ninong-nina doon sa marriage contract. But this part should be well known to the solemnizing officer, to the minister. Dapat alam niya. Otherwise, pag hindi na pirma na maayos yan, hindi mariristro yan, at hahabulin niya uli yung lahat ng mga ninong-nina na umatin doon sa wedding. Pag niyo hahabulin sa isa yan. Di ba? Ang hirap magpapirma uli. So ito po yung sasabi ko kanina, na pwede lang upakasal ang isang 16 at 14 years old <laughs> under the civil code. Before the family code, yan po ang kanilang ano. Dahil sa tumaas ang marriage breakups, dahil sa sobrang bata nila, unprepared sa kanilang marriage responsibilities. So, sa Article 5, sabi dito, uh, ginawa ng 18 pataas. Okay? Having reached the age of maturity and freedom of judgment. So, nakita ng mga scientists siguro, nirecommend nila, na pag tumuntong dalaw sa 18 ng isang party, ang isang human being, eh alam na nila yung kanilang pinapasok na pag-aasawa. Yan ang naging uh, age recommended by the scientists when this law is being deliberated. So the rule on marriage ceremony, anong article ito? This is Article 6. Wala raw prescribed form of religious right for the solemnization of the marriage. is required. Ibig sabihin, may misa man o wala, may mga... Veil called Kendallman o wala, eh hindi po concern ng gobyerno yan. Okay? Ang concern po ng gobyerno, kayo ba ay nasa tamang edad? Kayo ba ay, ay pinayagan ng magulang nyo kung kailangan pa ng consent or advice doon sa edad na, na 18 to 22 at 22 hangga, uh, 18 to 21, then 22 to 25. Para sa parents' advice or consent. Yun po yung mas concern ng gobyerno kaysa doon sa sa anong klase ng ceremony ba yung gagawin niyo okay <laughs> ay na wag pakain kayo ng apoy diyan or <laughs> may mga lumilipad-lipad sa inyong ceremony eh hindi po yan concern ng gobyerno kaya pag nagtanong po kayo sa sa inyong mga consultant or planner, allowed po ba na ganitong gawin sa ceremony? Allowed po ba? Eh, tanongin nyo yung magkakasal sa inyo. Kung papahig siya. Yun po ang makakasagot. Hindi po ang gobyerno. Okay po? So, personal appearance, gaya ng nasabi kanina, nandito po yan sa Article 6 ng Family Code. Sa presence ng solemnizing officer at mga witnesses. Article 7 na tayo. Sino ang mga pwedeng mag-solemnize ng kasal? Number 1, paragraph 1, justices and judges. Sa Supreme Court, sa merong court. Okay? Huwag lang Victoria Court. Wala pong nagkakasal doon. Ha? <laughs> so, pa second paragraph, any priest, rabbi, imam, or minister of any church or religious sect. So, ang sabi dito, any church, kahit anong simbahan. Basta, inautolize ng kanyang simbahan, basta, yung simbahan na yon ay nakarehistro. Saan? Sa Securities and Exchange Commission. Paano nagkakaroon ng lisensya ang mga nagkakasal? Pag yung kanyang simbahan na rehistrado, ay in-endorse siya sa PSA. Okay? So, PSA yung task by the government to accept 
process and issue licenses for the wedding ministers. Hindi na yung FEC. No? Yung Philippine Statistics Authority na. Uh, at yung kanila mga license sa pagkakasal ay merong out boundary. Ibig sabihin, kung saan yung lugar lang na pwede siya magkasal, hanggang doon lang siya. Okay? Kung buong probinsya lang ng Batangas yung kanya authority, hanggang doon lang siya. Pag lumabas siya doon, magkakaroon ng mga adjustment sa papeles, which may be a misrepresentation na later on. Pag may nagreklamo. Okay? <laughs> Sino pa ba magre-reklamo niyan? E di kung kayo ay minor de edad, di magulang ang magre-reklamo niyan. Wala silang consent or advice. Any ship captain or airplane chief? Only in the cases mentioned in Article 31. Na pupunta natin later on kung kakasya pa oras. Number four, any military commander, any consul general kapag kaya nasa abroad. Or city mayors under the local government code. Territorial jurisdiction, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, meron lang boundary yung kanilang license to solemnate, solemnize marriages. Pag nakalagay doon ay the entire Philippines, wala kang kukwestiyonin doon. Kahit saan siya makarating, pwede siya magkasal kasi entire Philippines. Okay? At itong Rule 2.15, Territorial Jurisdiction, ay nilinaw po sa Administrative Order No. 1, Series of 2007, ng IRR, Governing the Registration of Authority to Solemnize Marriage with the Civil Registrar General. Sa po lang Territorial Authority, ay nandito po, yung nakabox po na red, covers the entire Philippines. Okay? Dapat may nakalagay pong ganyan. Para pwede nyo siyang bit-bitin kahit saan. Rule on marriage venue. Ano ba ang sinasabi ng batas? Nungkol dito, nasa Article 8 po yan, ang kasal ay gagawin publicly in the chambers of the judge or in open court. Pwede sa chambers ng judge or sa korte mismo or sa simbahan or sa chapel or temple or sa opisina ng consul general at hindi daw elsewhere. Hindi sa kung saan-saan. Pero, siyempre, by every rule, there is an exception. Except in cases of marriages contracted at the point of death, hindi mo na pwedeng... Naiintindihan ng batas na kung nasa bingit ng kamatayan, eh, alam mong magpunta pa kayo sa opisina ng judge or simbaha. Di ba? Common sense na po yan. Or... Where both of the parties request the solemnizing officer. Ito po yung pangalawang kondisyon. Kung hindi mangyayari or magaganap sa mga sinabing venue na ito, ito po yung kondisyon. Kung nag-request yung parties sa magkakasal sa kanila, halimbawa, identified na nila kung sino yun, nakapili na sila, susulatan nila yung minister na yun na pumapayag siya. So makikita din yung yung pirma ng solemnizing doon sa request. No? At the house or place or venue designated by them in a sworn statement to that effect. At yan po ay makikita dito sa sample na ito. Okay? Uh, ito ay ninonotaryo. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi ng family code, eh, kailangan sworn statement. Okay? Sworn statement. Pag sinabi yung sworn statement, that means notariado. At yan ay public declaration or public document na magiging accountable kayong dalawa. Pag yan ay nagkaroon ng issue or problema or inatake ng sino mang offended party, kung meron man. Only when there are offended parties. So venue certificate para magpatunay na yung Kasal ay naganap doon sa venue na yun. The venue sa issue a certificate signed by the manager na may naganap ng kasalan doon. At ito ay hindi ini-issue before the wedding. Ini-issue ito after the wedding. Katunayan na naganap na, nangyari na. Okay? So, i-date nyo po ito ayon sa araw at oras na kasal. So, we time check. It's 8.33. 
Bibilisan ko na. Rule where to register the marriage. Article 23. Kung saan ang kasal ay ginanap. Sa loob ng 15 days. Mula sa marriage date na nakalagay doon sa inyong marriage certificate. Okay? Trabaho po yan ng solemnizing officer. E pag tinake nyo yung responsibility as parties na i-register yung marriage ninyo, eh, baka magkaroon kayo ng issue sa pagre-register. May mga question yung city hall. May mga hingin sa inyo additional documents. Eh, mamoblema kayo. <laughs> eh, meron lang kayo 15 days. So, huwag kayong papayag na kayo yung magre-registro. Trabaho po yan ng nagkasal. Article 23, sabihin po ninyo. Ha? So, if you know this, hindi po kayo mapapagsamantalahan. <laughs> okay. The marriage license, ito po yung form na pinifila pa ng mag-asawa, ah, na magpapakasal, firmado ng lalaki sa kanan, firmado ng babae sa kaliwa. Lahat ng detalye nila, personal details, ang makikita po dyan sa box na yan. At gagayahin po yan ng inyong minister, solemnizing officer, para isalin sa marriage contract ninyo. At ito yung usual na lisensyang ini-issue nilalabas ng City Hall. May nakalagay sa ibabaw na Republic of the Philippines, Quezon City, kung Quezon City can apply, marriage license and free receipt of 100 pesos. Alam niyo ba yung presyo na itong 100 pesos na ito? Eh, 1950s pa. Okay? <laughs> Iba na po ang presyo niya ngayon. So, sa dami ng forms na na-imprenta, kailangan nalang ubusin. Okay? Kasi may control numbers yan. Hindi siya pwedeng ibasura. Okay? They are all accountable forms. So, bago magbago ng form, ang gobyerno, kailangan na ubos muna. Article 9, Rule on Marriage License. Local civil register ang nag-i-issue. Well, either contracting parties resides. At ipopost yan sa labas ng City Hall for 10 days sa pintuan ng civil register. Para ipaalam sa buong mundo na mayroong kinakasal na pangalan si Maria at si Jose. Sino man tumututol ay pumunta lamang sa opisinang ito at sabihin kung bakit hindi sila dapat makasal. So this is part of the requirement of the law para kung sakaling may maghabol, mayroong naagrabyado, eh mayroong pang tsansa. Pag lagpas ng 10 days, eh wala na. Doon ka na lang humabol sa simbahan. No? Na itigil ang kasal! <laughs> <laughs> at makahabol mo pa habang hindi na re-register yung kasal i-re-register pa yung father o ni, ni minister ni pastor okay pwede ka pa makahabol doon okay <laughs> now article 10 to 19 covers the rule on marriage license so uh, mga technical aspect ito ng marriage license hindi na natin ito isa-isahin dahil mahaba ito matagal ito then we proceed to Article 20. A license shall be valid in any part of the Philippines. Daming couples ang hindi nakakaalam nito. Uh, saan po ba valid yung aming marriage license? Yan po ay any part of the Philippines. Parang driver's license yan na hindi ka naman nililimitahan ng driver's license kung saan ka magdadrive, kung saan ka lang pwede magdrive. Walang ganun. Okay? <laughs> so pag inisyo ng gobyerno yan, ang isang license to a particular uh, practitioner, service provider, may sinuwad yan. So, kagaya din yan ng license ng mga, ng mga doktor, ng mga, ng mga engineers. Nagkakaroon lang ng restriction ang isang license kagaya ng territorial jurisdiction ng mga minister dahil sa endorsement ng kanilang superior o ng kanilang simbahan. O, hanggang dito ka lang pwede magkasal, ha? hindi ka pwede magkasal doon dahil hindi kikita yung simbahan doon. <laughs> so yan ang reason yan kung bakit may mga territorial jurisdiction para kumita naman yung ibang kasimbahan, yung katabi. Okay? <laughs> uh, ano lang yun, common sense lang. No valid marriage license? No valid marriage. Okay? Ganun po yung kasimple. Kasi nga, yung marriage license, pag tinagalog mo yung license, 
yan yung karapatan na binibigay sa'yo ng gobyerno. Kung ikaw nga ay pwede lang magpakasal kahit na ikaw ay nasa tamang edad. Kaya dumadaan sa mga seminar para siguraduhin na naintindihan nyo na yung pinapasok ninyo. Okay? Kaya kung mapapansin nyo dito sa checklist na ito, pag 25 pataas kayo, may family planning na seminar kayo nga atilan. Pag 24 and below, may kasamang counseling. Okay? By the Health and Social Services Department. Sa Enomar, ito ay galing sa PSA, nagpapatunay na wala kang pinakasalang iba. At ilalagay lang nila dyan, no record of marriage. Okay? At ito ay valid lang for 6 months. Bakit? Kasi every 6 months, iniipon yung mga nagpapakasal at in 6 months, months time, lumalabas niya sa system ng PSA sa computer. Okay? Kaya 6 months yung validity. Dahil after that, pwede nang may lumabas na bagong record about you. No? Baka nagamit yung pangalan mo sa ibang lugar, ibang tao. No, may mga nangyaring ganyan ha. Kapatid niya, ginamit 'tong pangalan niya. Nagulat <laughs> siya, kasal na pala siya. So, that issue kahit na hindi sinasabi ng batas, you have to check on that because this is for your own good. Okay? Kung foreigner lang iyong mapapangasawa, may passport siya. Showing data and date of arrival. May stamp yun. Bagat yun sa airport, dumating siya dito. Stamp. Date and date and hanggang kailan yung kanyang stay. Kailangan po yan ng city hall para makita na nandito siya talaga. Okay? Para maiwasan yung mga marriage na hindi naman pala nag-arrive dito. Hindi naman dumating. Eh, nakasal. So, magiging defective document yan kapag ginamit niya sa abroad. Okay? Maraming paliwanagan ang mangyayari dyan. <laughs> At pati yung nag-issue ng marriage license ay maaaring ma-question. Bakit mo yung issue ng marriage license to? Hindi na pala ito dumating dito. So they have to have a document or record na talaga nandun yung foreigner before the marriage. And take note, hindi sila pwedeng umalis ng bansa habang tumatakbo yung 10 days na pag apply ng license. Dapat ay nandito siya. Okay? Sino man yung foreigner sa inyo, babae man o lalaki yung foreigner, tell him or her na hindi siya pwede lumayas dito. No? Sa loob ng sampung araw na pinaplasis ang inyong marriage license. Okay? Kung bukas ang embassy, kailangan niya kumuha ng legal capacity to marry. Dahil sa pandemic, maraming embassy ang nagsara. Yung ibang embassy natin, nag-walk out na. <laughs> Sinarado na opisina na lang dito. So, kung yung citizenship ng ng iyong mapapangasawa ay walang embassy dito, so challenge yan. But we issue a legal option in cases like that. So, may legal option na ginagawa dyan na available under the family code din. Pero hindi ko isi-share dito kasi trade secret namin yun. Ha? <laughs> okay. So, kung divorce naman, copy of final decree of absolute divorce dahil wala tayong divorce. So, the other party na pinapaksalan mo na divorce has to present a document na siya ay talagang divorce na. So, marami naging issue tungkol dyan na meron gusto na magpakasal na foreigner na hindi pa tapos yung kanyang divorce. Gusto na uli mga kasal dito. Okay? <laughs> Gustong gusto na eh. Gusto na maging maligaya, maging masaya. Alam nyo ba, epekto niyan pag hindi maayos yung papers tapos natuloy pa rin yung kasal ninyo, nariiso pa rin. Kasi may mga ministers na para lang kumita, no? Kahit na defective yung mga papel, iriiso para lang may masabing marriage contract. So lalabas yung problema ninyo pag kayo ay ini-scrutinize na sa country kung saan ka dadalhin pag nag apply na siya ng visa para sa iyo ha kabayan <laughs> so okay papayag na hindi maayos yung papeles niyo 
Dahil kasakit ang ulo niyo later on. Dahil yung remedyo na nakuha niyo, yung mabilis na prosesong na-enjoy ninyo, ang kapalit niyan ay mahabang uh, sadness. No? <laughs> Hindi enjoyment. Kaya much better na maghanap kayo ng, ng long term na yung happiness na may long term na hindi aagawin sa iyo. Marami nang nasira ang relationship dahil lang sa document problems. Ha? Na saksihan po namin 'yan dahil pag nagka-problema na, saka din nadala sa amin. Nung hindi pa nagkaka-problema, hindi kami pinapansin. <laughs> so, 'yan ang lesson learned, no? Certificate of Family Planning and Marriage Counseling and Responsible Parenthood. Yan po ay binibigay ng City Hall. So, tanongin nyo yung schedule at tingnan nyo, kumakatin kayong dalawa. Now, there is a company that offers online counseling. So, check nyo sila. Uh, they are accredited by the DSWD to conduct Pre-marriage counseling and family planning. Yung po yung BCIDP Exclusive School for Purpose. Check nyo sila sa FB. Oo. Online yung kanila mga scheduling. Kaya magmamatch talaga ito kung hindi pa dumarating yung mapapakasal, mapakasalan mo, makakapag-counseling na kayo. Okay? Kasi wala naman tinatakda yung patas na pag nag-counseling kayo, kailangan personal. Hindi. Yung marriage lang, yung personal, dapat nandito kayo. <laughs> okay? In applying the the marriage license, the online counseling is acceptable. Okay? Lalong-lalo na ngayong may pandemic. So, hindi hindi possible na maging, no, magkaroon ng rule na dapat personal din ang counseling na pag-ate. Walang rule na ganun at hindi naman sa illegal. Okay? So, yun po ang inyong uh, tandaan. May mga tinatakda yung batas, nakasulat. Kung hindi ka lumalabag doon, eh, there's nothing illegal on it. Kung walang rule about it, wala ka rin nilalabag na batas kasi wala eh. At hindi naman din sa going against the, the principle of personal appearance in the presence of solemnizing officer. Dahil lang sinasabi doon, solemnizing officer, hindi marriage counselor. Okay? <laughs> Malinaw na po, ha? So, para sa mga edad 18 to, 18 to 20, consent po ang kailangan. Parents advice po para naman sa mga 21 to 24 years old. Yung consent, ito ay in writing. Okay? Napungapayag po ako. Pag hiningi ng city hall nyo yan sa pag-apply ng marriage license, pungapayag po ako na ipakasal ang aking anak kay ganito. So, in writing yun. 18 to 20 years old eh. Yung advice, 21 to 24, ito ay binibigay naman sa araw ng kasal. Tatawagin yung magulang. Kayo, sino po ang pumapayag na makasal ang taong ito? Tatawagin yung magulang. Tatanungin personally during the ceremony. Dahil yung solemnizing officer ay may karapatang itigil ang kasal kung, or may siyang prerogative na hindi ito lang yung kasal kung hindi po papayag ang magulang. O, lalo na pag nakita niya yung magulang mo, iyak ng iyak. <laughs> <laughs> Ba't po kayo naiiyak, nanay, tatay? Okay? So magkakaroon ng doubt. Once na pumasok yung doubt, doon sa nagkakasal, eh, magdasal na kayo. Ha? <laughs> okay. Rule on foreigners. Article 21, kung taga ibang bansa, syempre, foreigner eh, Kailangan nilang kumuha ng legal capacity to marry nga. Or na, I think na-explain ko na ito kanina. Advance ako eh. <laughs> Article 22, Rule on Marriage Certificate Preparation. Setting the rule on preparing the marriage certificate which obligation fails to the wedding ministers. Oh, kita nyo? Ito ay obligasyon ng wedding ministers. Yung pag-type ng inyong marriage certificate. Na dati ang tawag ay marriage contract. So naging marriage certificate na yun. 22, malapit na tayo. Uh, ready nyo na yung mga questions ninyo ha? Ito yung marriage certificate on the day na pinipirmahan. It's still 
series of 2017 pa rin ang ginagamit. Siguro isang bodega pa yung mga forms na naimprenta na ganito. Kaya hindi pa ito napapalitan. Okay? Pag napunta na sa PSA, ito na ang itsura niya. Meron na siyang uh, security code. And yan ay for purposes of checking the the authenticity of the document na hindi galing recto. Okay? <laughs> so, after 4 to 6 months yan, actually, before the pandemic to, yung 4 to 6 months, ngayon, dahil pandemic na, it can be more than 6 months. Kaya, meron ding tayong services na mas mapapaaga. So, tawag lang po kayo sa BCIDP Law Office. Okay? Rule on Marriage Registration Venue. Na-explain ko na ito kanina. Saan ginawa ang kasal? Doon po siya i-register sa loob ng 15 days. Magmula sa araw ng kasal. Pag sinabing 15 days, kasama dyan ang, ang Saturday and Sunday. So calendar days po yan. Ha? Now, kapag nagsasama na at nag-execute ng affidavit of cohabitation under Article 34 of the Family Code, 30 days po ang period sa pagre-reason ng kasal. Okay? At 30 days din kung ang marriage ay ginawa in articulo mortis or at the point of death, ang tawag to. Okay? Ang marriage ceremonies natin, gusto lang po namin linawin. Ito po ay ayon na rin sa sinabi ng Article 6 Family Code. Para mas maintindihan po ng ating mga couples, mayroon pong iba-ibang ceremony na religious or non-religious. So sa Roman Catholic at Christian or Muslim na sektarya ng religious, pwede mo rin ilagay ng wedding symbols. Okay? Sa civil ceremony, no symbols at all, ring lang. Kasi ring, hindi naman yung religious symbol. Eh. So yung may mga religious symbol ay yung may veil, cord, candle, at uh, flowers. Okay? <laughs> Religious symbols siya. Rule on persons who can solemnize marriages. Balikan natin Article 7. Pero this will just be a repetition of what I already explained. Time check is 8.51. Naku, magiging isang oras na tayo. Kailangan natin i-entertain ang mga questions ninyo. Uh, Miss Summer, Madam, are you still there? Yes, sir. Here pa. Nag-list okay. down ng questions. Ah, okay. Meron na ba? Excited yeah. na ako sagutin. Excited na ako sagutin yung mga questions na yan. <laughs> Pwede na. The, the floor is open to entertain your questions. Kasi yung article hanggang 1 to 34 talks about just the marriage requirement. So yung article 34, pinakadulo is the cohabitation where the parties live together for five years already. Hindi na nila kailangan mag-apply ng marriage license. Now, hindi naman porke 5 years na kayo nagsasama, eh entitled na kayo. Meron pa rin tinitingnan yung batas. For example, kapag nagbilang ka ng 5 years pa atras, ilang taon kayo nung araw na yon. So pag yung 5 years na yan, binilang pa atras, tapos pumatak na 17 years old kayo, <laughs> may problema tayo doon. Okay? Pag pumatak yan ng 5 years pa atras at 16 years old yung kasama mo, yung asawa mo, may problema din tayo doon. <laughs> Hindi kayo qualified doon. Okay? So, common sense lang ang pinapairal sa ating uh, pag-implement actually ng batas. Common sense. na Hindi dapat magkaroon ng technicalities sa mga pinuprovide na kakalapatan sa atin sa pag-aasawa. Okay po? So, Miss Summer, first question. Sir, yung huling topic mo. Uh, yung Article 34? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Okay. Good. Kasi, um, call this. Uh, Di ba sabi mo, there's no need to file for a marriage license kapag mm -hmm. uh, nagsasama na. Yes. Diba? Uh, mm. Pero, so, uh, blah, blah, blah. 
<laughs> para ikasal. So ano yung hmm. kailangan nila i-submit sa sa church kung ganung hindi na nila kailangan mag-process pa ng license? We call that affidavit of cohabitation or joint affidavit of cohabitation. Pwede nalang paggawa yan sa any notary public na nakikita nila. Pag may signboard, notary public. Pwede nalang paggawa yan doon. Ang nilalaman ng document na yan, ako si Elmer at si Almira na pinangalak sa taong ganito at nakatira sa taong ganito na kami ay nagsasama na ng five years and above, at wala pong hadlang sa amin o legal impediment para kami ay makasal. Minsan, mayroong anak na mas tumitibay yung affidavit, yung salaysay. Sa katunayan, kami po ay mayroon ng anak na nagnangalang uh, Alci, ganito, na pinanganak noong ganito, at ang kanyang birth certificate ay ina-attach namin dito. So, inaalis mo na yung daw. Kung sakaling nagbilang ng 5 years, pabalik, pumatak kayo dun sa 18 years old or 17 years old, pero may anak na kayo, hindi naman kayo pipigilan ng gobyerno na magpakasal. Kailangan lang kayo mag-undergo ng masusing counseling <laughs> bago kayo bigyan ng lisensya. Yung, yung iba nga, eh, pinapaghintay mo lang ng 3 months. Kasi nandun din yun sa family code eh. Bago sila bigyan ng marriage license. Yung 3 months na yan ay pagbibigay panahon sa magulang at sa parties na magpa-counseling, ma-check ma nilang mabuti ang kanilang mga sarili kung dapat nga magpakasal. Pero pag may anak na, iba na yung usapan eh. Kailangan lang mabigyan ng tamang pagtuturo tungkol sa kanilang mga obligasyon bilang mag-asawa. Pero sir, let's say ano, uh... Kasi ang supporting paper, doon sa sample na binigay mo, ang supporting paper nila is the birth certificate ng anak. So kung, kung, wala, silang, anak. Oh, kung wala silang anak, kailangan pa ba ng supporting papers? Birth to prove na nagsasama sila? No. Birth certificate that shows yung actual age nila. Okay. Pero nothing to, uh, to prove na nagsasama sila. No need to attach na... May mga, may mga city hall na very... Particular sa ganyang issue, ha? Pag nagkaroon ng doubt, mm -hmm. the moment na nagkaroon ng doubt, oh, kumuha kayo ng statement sa inyong mga kapitbahay na talagang kayo ay nagsasama. Mm, affidavit. Okay. Pag affidavit yung kapitbahay, oh, kilala namin yan, kapitbahay namin yan. Nagsasama talaga sila ng more than five years. Katunayan, ganito, ganito, ganito. And another one na mag-validate ng sinasabi ng isa. And sometimes, pag nagduda pa din, Barangay Certificate. <laughs> Ihingi yung City Hall ng Barangay Certificate. Tanungin nyo nga yung chairman nyo. Issue a certificate na talagang dyan kayo nakatira for the last five or more years. So, okay. kailangan maalis yung, yung doubt eh. Kasi hindi naman sila pupunta doon sa bahay nyo eh. Di ba? They will not yeah. do that. Okay, next. Uh, you mentioned one of the people who can officiate weddings are the judges and mayors, di ba? Pwede ba sila mag-officiate sa beach, sa, sa garden weddings, mga ganun? Oo naman, kahit saan. Pero mayroong tinakda yung family code na uh, sworn statement ng couple requesting the minister to conduct the marriage dun sa lugar na pinili nila. Without that, magkakaroon ng doubt ulit yung city hall pag nirehistro na yung marriage. Okay? Papaya. Ayan, nawawala yung audio mo, ma'am. Hello? Ayan, ayan, ayan. Yeah. So nasa okay. description na lang ng judge or mayor kung papayag sila na outside their chambers or or on a weekend, you know. The judges, the justices, they don't go out to solemnize marriages. Hindi nila trabaho actually yan eh. Secondary na yan sa kanilang duties. The primary duties nila is to resolve cases, not to solemnize marriages. Kaya kung gusto nilang judge at justices, pupunta kayo mismo doon sa opisina nila. 
Mm, okay. So meron yung interview, you have to be you have to pass the judge's interview, no? I scrutinize kayo documents, your personality, etc. Before so the solemnity. So basically, the ones na pwedeng mag-officiate outside are the mayors. Mayors and priests and pastors and imams. Okay. Rabbi. Tapos, yeah. Okay. Then kanina you've mentioned also na um ang so dito sa wedding kailangan in the presence of uh, present pareho. Yes. Diba? Uh, kasi I've seen some 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 threads on mm -hmm. Facebook na may online wedding daw. So <laughs> I, I know it's not uh, it's not allowed here, pero do you think it's allowed in other countries na or talagang everywhere bawal yung online wedding nagpapauso lang yung iba? Okay, get it all. Kung parehong Pilipino ang parties, hindi talaga allowed ang online marriage. Okay. The exemption comes kapag yung isang party foreigner. Mm. At, yung for at yung foreigner na yon ay mayroong online marriage law sa kanyang bansa. Mm. Okay. Acceptable yon sa kanila. Kaya yung Pilipina, pwedeng mapetisyon nung foreigner na yon Kasi valid yung online marriage sa kanila. Pag binaligtad mo yung sitwasyon, nag-online marriage si, sila, tapos si foreigner may online marriage law sa kanyang bansa. Tapos siya yung pinitisyon ng Pilipina, papunta dito sa Pilipinas, hindi tatanggapin yung kanilang marriage. Kasi walang online marriage law ang Pilipinas, tapos dito magagamitin yung marriage certificate ninyo. It will not be accepted or recognized. Okay. Yun yung, sinasabi, yun yung sinasabi ng batas na talagang void from the beginning. <laughs> Because okay. in the absence of a law to support it. Okay, next question. Difference of parental advice sa consent. Difference of advice sa consent. Okay, I explain ko to kanina eh. Yung advice... Aside from, it, aside from the age thing. Uh Oo, -oh, it's a verbal... Advice given during the marriage rites. Tatanungin yung parents. Kasi 21 to 25 yun eh. Yung tinatanong eh. So, if the parents are there, they will be asked personally by the minister. Mapayag ba kayo? Opo, mapayag po kami. Verbal, acceptable yun. Sa, sa law. Now, yung consent, it has to be in writing. Kasi nga 18 to 20 yung edad na involved eh. Or 18 to 21 eh. So, they are too young in maturity na the government cannot take chances on that kaya mayroong consent requirement kahit na sinasabi ng family code na 18 pwede nang pakasal mayroong pa rin consent requirement dahil may doubt pa rin ang gobyerno about sa maturity ng kinakasal so kung pinayaga ng magulang in writing yun ay pag-aalis ng doubt sa gobyerno or assuming na yung parents ay nagbigay ng guidance sa anak niya. Responsibilidad na nila yun. Okay. The moment they, they do that. Next question, sir. Uh, okay. You mentioned also earlier na yung ating mga kapitan sa barko, yung mga ganyan, pwede din silang mag- Oo, they are allowed by law to solemnize marriage. Lalo na doon sa mga uh, libawa sa crew nila ganoon sa crew na stranded gusto na nilang pakasal para ma-legalize yung kanilang pagsasama hindi sila magmukhang mga makasalanan sa loob ng barko <laughs> yeah so kuno mari sir uh, ayan they're they're out at sea ay uh, kakasal mm. so kung dun sa marriage uh, license nila anong ilalagay nilang country let's say taga Pilipinas sila pero uh, they're in South China Sea? Ang masusunod pa rin ay yung citizenship ng mga parties. Kahit saan sila nandun. So, paano kung different nationalities? They have two options. 
kung saan nandoon yung barko or kung saan yung opisina ng kapitan sa Maynila. Pwede niyang gamitin yun. Okay. Hmm. Or uh, ng piloto. Hmm. Okay. So, doon naman sir, doon sa ano, actually, first time ko na ano to eh, yung venue certificate. Mm-hmm. Uh, pag let's say garden wedding. No? Uh, sinong gagawa ng draft nun? Uh, yung couple ba para papirmahan na lang doon sa manager ng venue o si kung sino nag-officiate siya nang mag-prepare para magpapirma? Sa office namin, we provide the template kagayahin ang venue using their own letterhead firmado ng manager nila. Oh, okay. Kung sanay yung hotel or yung resort or yung venue sa pag-isa ng mga ganyan, maintindihan nila yun. No more okay. questions asked. If sanay sila. Okay. Kasi, kung, kasi ganito, may isa pang issue dyan na yung nagkakasal, hindi niya nilalagay yung resort. Lalo na kung, or yung hotel, hindi niya nilalagay na place of venue. Ano nilalagay niya? Yung opisina niya. Lalo na kung nakalimutan niyang magpanotaryo ng sworn statement or letter request ng parties. <laughs> Ganun po yung ginagawa. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doon sa posting, yung 10-day posting, uh, that includes working days? Uh, Saturday, Sunday, working days lang? Work, uh, calendar days. Calendar days. Yes. Uh, yung doon sa validity natin ng 120 days, calendar days also. Calendar days. Okay. And then, oh yeah, ito one scenario. Kinasal sila sa Pilipinas. Pumunta na sila ng Amerika, doon na sila, citizen na sila ng, sa Amerika, pero maghihiwalay. So yung saan sila magpa-file ng separation or, or is it divorce since nasa Amerika na sila? Kung pareho na citizens doon, entitled na sila sa divorce. Kung may divorce law yung bansa na pinuntahan nila. So kung ano yung uh, existing law of the land, kung nasan sila? Na, kung saan yes. sila citizen? Yes. Okay, sige. Uh, Miss Jing, may question ka? We have, we have one guest on the line. Mm, sige, go. O baka siya eh. Miss Jing, ako na lang tatman tatan. Uh, na lang. <laughs> oh yeah, siya na lang. <laughs> Ikaw na lang. <laughs> Na. Lima mo ko pa ma'am. Go. <laughs> Paano po pag halimbawa ikakasal dito sa Philippines pero ah, parang few days after ng kasal pupunta sa ibang bansa for mm-hmm. tatagal doon for work na yan something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yung pong passport, pan ko ya yun. <laughs> I mean kailangan po bang magpapalit ng ng name sa passport or paano okay. yung legality mo? Inaddress na yan ng isang Supreme Court decision na hindi compelled or legally obligated ang mga wife to change their names sa passport. Hindi siya required ng law. So, ang nagre-require lang niya madalas kapag pipetisyonin ka na ng bansang ng bansa ng groom na pinakasalan mo. So, if that is a rule sa kanilang bansa, wala kang choice kundi ipapalit yung pangalan mo sa passport sa pangalan niya. Pero sir, yung ano, uh, dito kasi dun sa, meron bang portion dun sa passport na nakalagay if you're single or married? Wala. Wala. Miss Jane, wala ah, ka lang problem. Eh. Wala yung status <laughs> doon. Pareho naman kami yung Pinoy. Mm, okay. So, yun. Hindi, sa, naman hindi, naman sa, naman. hindi sa dual citizen? Hindi po. Parang okay. for church activity kasi kaya lang po nandun. Parang ano lang. Mm, marami din tayong clients na ganyan. Uh, church missionary. Opo. Oh, parang ganyan. Pero, Pero kung asal. ano uh, tawag dito. So pwede niyang gamitin as is yung current passport oh, niya. Tapos uh, kailan siya pwede magpalit? Pagbalik na lang niya here? Pag... Na-reason na yung marriage, ang hinihingi ay PSA marriage copy. 
So kahit wala yung groom mo, you can change the, the name in your passport. Pero aatin ka sa CFO, CFO, Commission on Philippine Overseas ng orientation. May required orientation doon sa CFO na kung ano yung nationality ng kapapangasawa mo, they conduct a specific seminar for their culture, for their kind of life, yung standard of living nila doon. Kung baga parang katumbas ito ng, ng seminar na binibigay sa mga OFW, ino-orient sila about sa buhay sa Saudi or sa particular country na pupuntahan nila. This one is for married, married Filipinos. Pero kung Mission pareho naman sila, Sir Angel, paano kung pareho naman sila Pinoy? Ah, hindi na kailangan yun. Hindi na. Okay. Only for foreign foreign partners. So yung hmm. ano lang niya, yung uh, PSA, ano lang niya ang kailangan niya. Marriage yun. contract. Yun lang hihingi ng DFA. Na DFA. Na naka-PSA okay. na. Very good. Sting, mm-hmm. may other po. questions pa? Wala naman na po. <laughs> At least, makakahinga ka na mabuti. Correct. Narinig ko naman ng iba. <laughs> Yeah. Nabusahan mo, ma'am? Nabusahan mo? Oh, nabusahan niya. Opo, oh, medyo oh, yata. <laughs> yeah. Ang galing. Uh, sir, ikaw, may other, ano ka pa, sir, uh, Angel? Other scenarios that you would like to share? Oo, oh, dadagdagan tayo ulit ng isang oras. Marami akong, <laughs> kay, marami akong is, pwede i-share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eh, Thank ilang you. taon na namin? More than, more than 20 years na namin ginagawa itong pagkakasal na ito. So we are already the authority of the subject. Yeah, it pays to be an expert on your subject talaga. Mm-mm. Okay, so um, since we don't have any other questions, hold on, check natin. Okay, so we don't have any other questions. Uh, Facebook and here's a zoo. Um, yeah. I would like to thank Sir Angel again for being here with us. Much my pleasure, madam. Anytime, sa ikaw. Yeah. Yeah, love din kita. <laughs> uh, if they have more questions, pwede na lang i-type sa comment section tapos mag-part 3 tayo. Di ba? Yes. Walang problema doon. Ang, import- ang importante is uh, we get to um, share information to the couples who are getting married para yeah. Um, yeah, hindi na mahirapan po sa pag, pag process ng papers, less stress sa wedding because of course, uh, we don't want our brides to be bride sila. Dapat chill sila lang yung mga. Oo, oh, kailangan uh, re- ipaubayan, ipaubayan nila yung papers sa uh, kanilang wedding planners para hindi na sila ma-stress. Masa nasa isip lang kasi nila dapat yung wedding day to enjoy each other, di ba? Uh, legalize yung union at maging tama yung kanilang papers to prevent any future problems. So, thank you everybody for joining us tonight and we hope that we were able to shed some light, give you inform- needed information in preparing for your wedding and beyond. So, if you need any help, you can go to uh, Sir Angel, and yeah, actually, yeah. before we leave, I will like to share yung fan page ko nila here sa Facebook. So, again, if you need any help, you can go to the fan page of BCIDP Exclusive School for Couples Philippines. Yeah, ito naman, ito naman, this company covers the counseling section given by DSW, the NDOH. So we have yeah. a DOH. we have a partner from DOH, na family planning counselor, and also Miss Paula is a family planning counselor. Yeah. So, so yung sinasabi kanina ni Sir Angel that they can conduct online uh, counseling, no? Kung mm-hmm. sakali yung yung groom mo na sa ibang bansa, pwede na kayo mag online counseling. Hindi kailangan na magkasama kayo dito sa Pilipinas. Yes, bago dumating, schedule schedule ay mahirap. Pwede na mag-counseling pagdating dito ni groom. Punta na agad City Hall. Ito na po yung certificate namin, nakapag-counseling na kami. So, itay na lang in 10 days. Sir Angel, yung ano, yung pre-cana online din po? 
Yes, online din. Oh, that is nice. May mga Catholic Church partners tayo who conduct the online 3K na seminar. Oh, yeah. So everybody, yan na, uh, be sure to visit their fan page if you need online counseling um, for your pre cana or um, dito, marriage counseling. Yes, and family Kaka- planning. And family planning. Yeah, punta yeah. lang po kayo sa fan page ni Laticia, makakabawas po yun sa stress po ninyo. No? Um, yeah. We hope to have another session with uh, Sir Angel in, the, in a few weeks time. Para po matulungan po tayo uli with when it comes to our wedding planning or family planning or kung ano man yung kailangan pa natin para matulungan po tayo sa uh, pag-aalas ng added stress sa ating, yes. sa ating yes. wedding. Uh, ang, magpap- ang magpapalis ng stress natin is knowledge about the family. Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge is oh. power. Yes. <laughs> And Thank sharing you, is sharing. Thank you as yeah. well, Sir Angel. And I do hope to see you again. Miss Jing, maraming po salamat for joining us here in Zoom. Thank you po. You're Thank welcome. You. And I'm happy to answer natin yung concern mo. I was really worried for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. And thank Bye. you again for joining us. Peace and Thank blessings. You. Bye.